Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship here at Peace today. Great to have you here as we worship our Lord. Continue to grow in our faith in the summertime season, uh, these days after Pentecost and Trinity, these Sundays after those uh, events are times to listen to the Word of God and consider how God wants us to grow in our faith and also living out that faith on a daily basis. Um, Some of you may have noticed the post on Facebook, but Vicar Jacob and Marie and Andrew all headed out on Friday, loaded up, and by the way, thanks to anybody who was there loading up their U-Haul on Friday morning. It took about 30 minutes um, because we had a really good crew of people there helping out. And uh, they got down to St. Louis area, actually Bethalto, Illinois, and then uh, stayed overnight uh, with Marie's mom and then moved into their apartment yesterday on the seminary campus. They had to make a couple trips, I think, back and forth to get all their stuff there because they had things stored at the at mom's house too. So anyway, they're uh, on their way uh, to finish that last year of seminary. Um, Our next vicar, by the way, doesn't arrive for about a month, uh, not till about July 19th. Um, So we have a little gap in there because Marie was pregnant and is due in July 12th to have their second baby down there in St. Louis. So um, so a little bit of a break here uh, with vicars until uh, Vicar Bryce Clayton arrives with his wife, Anna, who will be our 7th and 8th grade teacher here at Peace. Um, Also, special thanks to anybody who helped out with the Orphan Grain Train uh, event yesterday. Uh, People brought in and donated items, and some people helped bring them up to Pickerel, and uh, our men's club donated the food for that event too, so special thanks to anybody who was involved in that. Um, There's some other announcements in your bulletin. Take a look at those. There's some family summer devotional kits still out on the table out there. Um, we have uh, uh, some other things happening. We have Bible study today as we do our Ring Vanderland, Vanderland series on Egypt. And today it's the plagues that were sent on the Egyptians uh, that conv- finally convinced Pharaoh to let the people go. So if you'd like to be a part of that, that's right after the service today. Um, I think that's it for announcements. Let's stand and greet one another as we begin today's service. We're also going to continue with our Bible verse of the week, which is up on the screens here. This will also be the basis of Pastor Dan's message with us today from our Old Testament reading, 1 Kings chapter 19. Let's speak those words together. Behold, the word of the Lord came to Elijah, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? We begin this time of worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated.
join in confessing our sins to God, knowing that in the cross of Christ we have forgiveness. O Lord, our God, you have set before us the way of life in your Son, Jesus Christ. But we confess with shame our slowness to learn of him, our failure to follow him, and our reluctance to bear the cross. Have mercy on us, O Lord, and forgive us our sins. Forgive us the poverty of our worship, our neglect of fellowship and of the means of grace, our hesitance to witness for Christ, our reluctance to serve you, and our failure to be faithful in the stewardship of all that you have entrusted to our care. Have mercy on us, O Lord, and forgive us our sins. Forgive us that so little of your love has reached others through us, that we have been quick to judge and condemn and slow to forgive and reconcile, neither loving you above all things nor loving our neighbor as ourselves. Have mercy on us, O Lord, and forgive us our sins. God has indeed had mercy upon you by sending his one and only Son, Jesus Christ. Your sins were taken to the cross where he died in your place. As I called an ordained servant of the word and by his authority and in his stead, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Through faith in Jesus and by God's grace given through the gospel, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, author and giver of all good things, graft into our hearts the love of your name and nourish us with all goodness that we may love and serve our neighbor through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As I mentioned, the Old Testament reading is the basis of Pastor Dan's message today from 1 Kings chapter 19, starting in verse 9. Behold, the word of the Lord came to Elijah, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. 
And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, Go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive you shall anoint Haziel to, the, to be the king, to be king over Syria, and Jehu the son of Nimshi you shall anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha the son of Shaphat of abel Mahola, and you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. And the one who escapes from the sword of Haziel shall Jehu put to death, and the one who escapes from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha put to death. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen in front of him. And he was with the 12th. Elijah passed by him and cast his cloak upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? And he returned from following him and took the yoke of oxen and sacrificed them and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and went after Elijah and assisted him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the epistle reading today from Galatians chapter 5, where Paul writes, For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh, for these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you as I warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to invite our child care director, Jenny Weicker, up at this time, and we invite our children to also come forward at this time for our special children's message. I have a little bit of an audience here. Is it going? Sorry. Thank you guys for joining me this morning. Okay, I want you guys to think for a minute, okay? 
Maybe you even want to close your eyes and think about what things have been like lately. Think about how hot the temperatures have been. We've had an unusually warm summer, right? It's been pretty hot. Yeah, have you guys been playing outside in that heat? Yeah, and sometimes that gets kind of tiring, right? When it's so hot outside, it gets really tiring. Okay, now I want you to imagine that you're having to do a job outside when it's really hot. Like maybe planting some flowers and shoveling, or you maybe have to be raking up some sticks in the yard, or maybe somebody challenges you to a race and you have to be running really, really fast and doing some work. Maybe you even have to be proving to somebody that your God, our God, is the one true God. That seems like could be a lot of work, right? Right, so it's really hot, you're having to do lots of work, and now, what if somebody was mad at you? What if somebody was yelling at you and mad at you? That wouldn't feel real good, would it? No, maybe there was a queen who was really mad at you because you just proved that your God was the true God. So now you're, it's hot, you're doing work, somebody's really mad at you. Maybe you would kind of feel like, oh, I can't do this anymore. This is too much. Too much, I'm tired. Do you think you would feel tired? Yeah. Yeah, what? Highly too much. It's just too much. So maybe you wanted to get away. You had to get out of there and get away and get someplace where you could just be away from it all. I found a chicken, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got out to this place and you were just exhausted. You were tired. You had had enough and you didn't feel like you could go on any longer. Suddenly, somebody appeared, and you know what they had for you? Maybe they had a nice cold bottle of water, and even like maybe a popsicle. Do you like popsicles? Yep, so a, maybe like a popsicle and some water, and maybe even a snack. What do you like to have for a snack? chips or strawberries, yeah. So now here you've got a nice cold bottle of water and some blueberries and strawberries or some chips, a nice cold popsicle, and then you know what? Maybe somebody even said, here, here's a nice comfy pillow. Why don't you lay down and take a little rest? Under, the, under maybe under the nice tree, the shade of a tree. Doesn't that sound a little bit better? Doesn't that sound like maybe you can go on? Maybe you wouldn't be so tired anymore. Maybe you could go back to doing what, you're, what you've been asked to do. So, yes, that is your brother. So God doesn't really hand us a bottle of water. God doesn't really give us a popsicle. And, right, and God doesn't, isn't the one who gives us a pillow and tells us, uh, you know, go ahead and take a nap. But you know what? God does give us rest. God gives us nourishment. God gives us rest. God refreshes us when we feel like we can't quite go on. So today we're going to say a little prayer of thanks for that. And you fold your hands with me. Can you fold your hands? Dear God, thank you for always giving me rest and nourishment and refreshment so that I feel like I can go on. Thank you for being the one true God and for our salvation. Amen. All right, thank you guys. At the church is a little treat. You can stop and get a treat, and then you can go back to your seat. We're going to invite the congregation to please stand as we continue with our gospel reading from Luke chapter 9. 
is right after Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration with the disciples and he's now heading to Jerusalem to complete his mission. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem and he sent messengers ahead of him who went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make preparations for him. But the people did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them, and they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated.
May the joy and the hope and the peace in Christ be yours again today. And may God empower this message to touch your heart in a rich and personal way. Amen. I love the old westerns. Gunsmoke, Wyatt Earp, Hopalong Cassidy, the Rifleman. You could always tell who are the good guys and the bad guys. You could always tell there's going to be a victory at the end when the good guys win. Today we have Star Wars and superheroes that portray that same kind of plot line. But to know the hero and to trust that that hero is going to win in the end is the key. I want to share a story this morning, an Old Testament story that follows that same plot line almost. Because right in the middle of the story, the hero begins to wonder and to doubt. Indeed, we find him in a dark valley in the middle of two mountaintop experiences. I want to talk to you today about the story of Elijah, the prophet chosen by God. We go back to 2 Kings 18 and find Elijah on the first mountain, Mount Carmel. And here he'll defeat 450 prophets, false prophets of Baal. And he will be victorious. And I wish the story ended there, but all of a sudden the scene turns and we see Elijah in despair because he faces one opponent, Queen Jezebel, who wants to take his life. And for reasons unknown, Elijah goes into the desert and asks God to take his life, for he sees no more hope for his life. Maybe you've been there. Maybe you've been there like Elijah, where life was going so well, and all of a sudden there was a significant detour, and now you find yourself wandering in pain and in despair like Elijah. You need to listen to the rest of the story if that describes you because the story does turn in that new direction. We find God providing two meals for Elijah that he might be able to take a journey, a 40-day journey to the second mountaintop, Mount Horeb, the mountain of God. And there Elijah will meet his God. Elijah comes out of a cave And God speaks to Elijah and asks him that question, what are you doing here, Elijah? Yes, Elijah, what are you doing here? Or maybe God would ask that question of you. What are you doing here this morning? Have you come to meet your God? Elijah goes into a deep lament about the fact that his people, God's people, have totally turned against his covenant, have torn down his altars, have destroyed the prophets, and now are seeking to take Elijah's life. And Elijah's feeling that despair and that helplessness. And God gives him a simple command, go and stand on the mountain. And all of a sudden there's this violent wind and the rocks are shaken, but God is not in the wind. And then the earthquake and then the fire but God isn't in the earthquake or the fire. And then there's this low whisper. And Elijah puts a cloak over his face and goes to face God at the entrance of that cave. And God repeats the same question, what are you doing here, Elijah? And Elijah goes back to that lament. But God has a different plan for his prophet. He says, I want you to go back the way you came. And I want you to anoint two kings, and I want you to anoint your successor as prophet. And he gives Elijah this reassuring hope. There are still 7,000 who have not bowed down to Baal. You are not alone in this mission. You are not alone. The mission goes on. We have a remarkable mission here at Peace Lutheran. It's called Stephen Ministry where we go out, not alone, but always with the guidance of the Holy Spirit to reach the needs of those in despair, those like Elijah, who maybe have had their mountaintop experiences, 
but now find themselves in that deep, dark valley, and they wonder, what do I do with my life now? Now that that medical crisis has hit, now that the divorce has taken place, now that I've lost my job, what do I do now? Who do I turn to? Or maybe a more important question they're burning in their heart, where is my God at such a time as this? They need someone to come to provide that comfort and that support and that encouragement. They need to hear the voice of God, that God would send someone in human form to share with them, to listen to them, to provide that assurance they don't stand alone because God is with them for such a time as this. Elijah had that deep lament. And I've heard that lament many, many times in my work as a counselor and as a pastor. And the Stephen ministers we have, we now have 12 trained Stephen ministers, hear that lament from the people they work with on a one-to-one -one basis. They hear the stories about the trauma in their life, the search in their life, the search for answers. And our trained Stephen ministers go one-to-one -one with them and provide that support and encouragement. It reminds me of my days when I was a counselor before I became a pastor. did a lot of work with addicts, alcoholics, drug addicts, gambling addicts, pornography addicts. And I followed a principle that was developed back in the 1940s that we can utilize within our work together with anyone going through a crisis. It's the 12-step program. And a paraphrase of those 12 steps is the first step is, I admit that my life is out of control and I can't fix it. My life is out of control and I can't fix it. I work with many who are on step one half. My life is out of control, but I'll fix it eventually. And the focus is on what I'll do instead of what God will do. Step two is that God has a plan for my life, a plan of stability and sanity. And step three is I'll turn my life over to that God as I understand him in my life. And then right at the center of the 12-step program is confession and absolution, where we admit to ourselves, to God, another individual, the exact nature of the crisis we're going through, the trouble, the struggle, the questions, the uncertainty. And we openly admit that that's part of our life and turn it over to God, to let go and let God take over. And then we work to restore relationships and build new ones, supportive, encouraging relationships that help us get through the next steps. And on a daily basis, we take those steps closer and closer to God to understand his will for our life and how to follow through with his power to the end. And finally, step 12 is where, having gone through that valley, we now reach out to others in the valley who are looking for a light, looking for a hand, looking for something to hold on to so they can get through those next days ahead. And God comes with that open hand. It reminds me of one more story from the Bible. It comes from Matthew 14, where we find Jesus walking on that troubled water to those disciples in the middle of a storm. And Jesus comes to them and says, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. And Peter says to Jesus, if it is you, Jesus, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus says a simple word, come. And Peter steps out of that boat onto that troubled water and begins to walk toward Jesus. And as long as he keeps his eyes on Jesus, he remains stable and steady. And then he notices the wind and the waves and he begins to sink and he cries out, Lord, save me! And the Lord reaches out his hand, raises up Peter and asks him that question, Peter, where was your faith? Not to judge Peter, but to clarify for Peter that the important element that he needs is faith, a growing faith, a strong and secure faith for the steps ahead. And when they get into that boat, the sea is calm. You see, in every storm, there's an ending. And at the ending is the light. 
the light comes back and provides that warmth and that comfort and that hope. And that's what we offer through Stephen Ministry, the comfort, the warmth, and the hope that even though the days are dark and the storm is real, there is still something to hold on to. It's Jesus, the cure giver, the Savior, the one who gave his life that we would have life to the full each and every day of our life. Yes, he calls us to that faith in the midst of our storms that we would know that we're not alone. He's there. He's reaching out his hand. He's asking us to trust in faith that he's there for us as well. Yes, we face those storms in life, but we have the assurance. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Yes, the ultimate hope, the ultimate life is ours because he gave all so we would have the fullness of life he came to share with each and every one of us. Celebrate the hope. Celebrate the victory. Celebrate Jesus Christ in your life today and every day. Let us pray. Oh, good and gracious God, we thank and praise you for the success of our Stephen Ministry program here at Peace Lutheran, that we indeed have 12 caregivers, those who are trained to be ministers to all those that we reach out to on a one-to-one -one basis. Instill with them the confidence, the hope, the joy of the work before them and provide that peace and that surrender of those they work with they are ready to receive in a deeper, personal way you and the faith that you provide in the midst of the storms. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand as together we confess our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. So a week ago, we finished Mission Anago. And some of you were involved in that, and I, I saw Vicar Jacob did uh, showed some some pictures up on the screen last week when he was uh, doing his final sermon and things. Um, we have a little video we want to show just of some of the work that was done for those of you that maybe missed that last week or um, didn't see some of those pictures. Um, and again, thanks to everybody who helped out in making a difference in our community as well as in some of the families within our churches. Um, so we're going to show that at this time and then we'll also bring the offering forward.
Again, we thank everybody who helped out in that uh, week of service in our community. Uh, special thanks, by the way, to Casey Smith and Asplund for the help of the big boom uh, truck and uh, uh, expertise in taking some of those trees down. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we give thanks for the gifts that you give us daily in this life, and especially the gift of salvation through your cross and resurrection. May these offerings be used to continue your ministry here in this place through the work of our church and school and child care ministry, as well as our mission work throughout this world. We give thanks, Lord, that we can partner together to accomplish your purposes. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue with our offering hymn. I would ask Lori Leiter to come forward at this time, along with all the other Stephen leaders and ministers in our midst, come forward and join together in this commissioning. As they're coming forward, just a reminder, we continue to look for new Stephen ministers and Stephen leaders. We plan to have a training in fall. If you're interested in becoming part of our program, there's a table in the back. You can pick up some materials this morning and talk with some of our Stephen ministers and leaders regarding what the program 
is all about. So thank you for coming forward this morning. This is a special morning as we commission Lori Leiter as our newest Stephen leader in our midst this morning. Lori, you have been trained by the Stephen Ministry Leadership Training Course and have been asked to serve as a Stephen leader in our congregation. You are the gift of God to us and lead us to the ministry of equipping and caring and now to the congregation. As Christians, we are part of that priesthood of all believers. All of us are called to offer ourselves to the Lord in thanksgiving for what God has done and continues to do for us in Christ Jesus. But it is our, also our privilege to recognize and support those who are trained for specific ministries in this congregation. Especially today, we re recognize and affirm Stephen Ministry and the Stephen leaders who direct this ministry. Because of your gifts, Lori, your calling and your training, we charge you with these responsibilities to build awareness of our growing Stephen ministry, to solicit the commitment of the congregation to Stephen ministry in every opportunity, to recruit, select, and train thoroughly Stephen ministers to the members of the congregation whose gifts can share with those in need, to use the resources of our community as appropriate to enrich the training and the ongoing supervision of Stephen ministry in our congregation, to work with the pastor and the rest of the leaders and ministers in this congregation to identify other members who would benefit from our individual care and confidentiality that we provide, to assist and train caregivers as appropriate to fit the human need, to supervise and with confidence the caring relationship and offer regular opportunities to continue growth in skills and practice in caring ministry. Are you willing to assume this particular ministry with confidence coming from God or so say, I will with the help of God. Will you nurture the skills that are learned and used to service others, to support, encourage, build up, and heal people in all their needs, so say yes with the help of God. Will you open your hearts to the ministry of these others who surround you and pray for them each and every day, if so answer yes with the help of God. Will you support the ministry of these trained leaders, affirm the training of the ministers, carefully trained to give caregiving, and to be a supportive part of this ministry program to maintain the encouragement, confidentiality needed to make it successful? Say yes with the help of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have called Lori to be a new minister, a new leader in our midst. Give her a spirit of service and a boldness to trust in you in this ministry to carry on this caring work and this faithful service. Help us all to be both willing servants and helpful recipients of this ministry so that your name may be glorified, your people live in peace, your good and gracious will be done through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord of the church fill you with the Holy Spirit, guide, bless, and keep you that you may be faithful in your ministry to which you've been called, gifted and trained, and sent. Amen. Go in peace. Do this turn throughout the congregation. Introduce yourself and what role you have in ministry ministry so the congregation becomes more familiar with the workers in our midst.
Thanks, Pastor Dan. Uh, so Pastor Dan Cohn is our pastoral leader for the Stephen Ministry Program and uh, also our other care ministries like Grief Share. So if you have questions, you can always talk to Pastor Dan. He's on staff here on Mondays, typically in the office. His office actually just moved recently, and now his office is kind of right next to my office, if you know where my office is, but in the newer, in new part of the building. Um, you know, we uh, have our prayers in our bulletin today. We want to add a couple prayers to that list. One is um, a prayer for Matt Rayner recovering from surgery. Matt is a member here at Peace. Um, and also, you know, we need to give thanks for the uh, Supreme Court decision that was made this week. You know, um, I think it was shocked a lot of people that maybe they reversed a bad decision from 50 years ago um, that legalized abortion, and we want to give thanks that that is not the case anymore, but now it falls to the states. Here in Wisconsin, abortion is not legal, so we give thanks for that too. Unfortunately, in our neighboring states, it is. Um, so we still have a lot of things to pray about, think about, work towards, I think, as uh, people who honor God's design for life as he reveals it in his word, which is from conception to the day he brings us home. You know, human life is his gift. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we give thanks again for watching over each one of us in our times of need. We lift up before you, especially those friends of ours and family members and the members of this congregation who are in need of your healing. We pray especially today for Charlotte, Luann, Jane, Mike, Ginny, Stephanie, Matt, uh, our friends and family, Dennis, Cullen, Steve, and also Sharon uh, and Mitch's uh, nephew and family as they lost their home in a fire. We pray, Lord, that you might meet their needs according to your will, and may they always know you are with them. Be with the families of this church, including Troy and Jody and Bobby, Billy, David, Ashley, Elizabeth, Eric, Paula, uh, and Mark, and also Eric. We pray that you might continue to strengthen and lead them in faith and service to you. Bring comfort to the families who've lost loved ones, including the family of Robert Stemack, Jr. Um, we pray, Lord, that you might bless them in their time of loss, and may they be drawn especially to the promises of your word and your glorious resurrection. We pray also your blessing on Vicar Jacob and Marie and Andrew and baby Sipes. Um, we give thanks that they made that trip safely. Um, and uh, be with them as they reorient back to the seminary now uh, in St. Louis. We pray also a prayer of thanksgiving for the re-election of uh, Reverend Dr. Dwayne Lewick as our North Wisconsin District President a few weeks ago. And be with all those who were elected to positions of service. Um, we pray for our military serving around this world. Lord, watch over and be with each one of them, especially those serving in dangerous places to protect our freedoms. And Lord, we give thanks for working through our Supreme Court of this nation to make uh, a decision which is in keeping with, with your view of human life. Um, so Lord, uh, we give thanks for that. Um, please continue to work through um, those who are seeking to honor the sacred uh, life that you've given to all on this earth from conception. Lord God, other prayers that we may have in our minds and hearts, uh, needs at this time, as well as praises and joys, we lift them up before you and know that you hear each one of our prayers, uh, both out loud and those that we silently say. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us stand together as we pray the prayer which our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Gracious God, as you send us out to be caregivers in this world, just as you cared for Elijah, and others in Scripture, so we know you will care for us. And please help us also to bring that good news to those around us that you indeed are the God of hope and care. In Jesus' name, amen. And now receive the benediction of our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen.